Hello and welcome to the third and final installment of this series on commerce in the 16 and 1700s. This one is about China and Japan. In SOL 5C, we will describe East Asia, including China and the Japanese shogunate, by creating annotated maps detailing the role these nations played in the development of global commerce. Here's the big picture. China and Japan sought to limit the influence and activities of European merchants. Here's the basics on China. It's the longest live of any of the empires we study. It has already, at this point, been around for 2,000 years, pretty much, get closing in on 2,000 years, and it is ruled by a strong emperor and a bureaucracy. And so it asks you on your study guide to define bureaucracy, so let's take a link out to that and see where we end up. All right, bureaucracy. A large group of people who are involved in running a government, but who are not elected. In this case, they were appointed by the emperor. Now, they traded in unique items like tea and silk and porcelain. Tea wasn't entirely unique, but silk was made from silkworms, which only the Chinese knew how to uh, keep alive and grow well, and porcelain, which is a technique for making really thin, beautiful pottery, and the Chinese protected the techniques for making that pottery really carefully because they made a lot of money that way. As a result, though, these maritime empires that you learned about in the first video start to target China. Because as Europe's population booms as a result of the potatoes, remember the potatoes, uh, the demand for unique Chinese goods grows because China's the only place you can get them, so all of these new European people want those goods. And they have enough money to buy them because of that commercial revolution thing that we learned about. So Europeans com uh, compete to trade with China. And then China reacts to that. China starts to feel like there are, and especially the emperor, feels like there's too much foreign influence in the country. And so they create things called foreign enclaves, which are small areas within seaports where foreign merchants could trade. And nowhere else. It was just in these small little zones where foreign people could be. And the enclaves helped to keep foreign cultural influence out as well. And this was a way for the government of China to control trade and especially control these, these sort of nosy European empires. Here's the basics on Japan. It's a small island nation. And unlike China, it had a weak emperor controlled by a military leader called the Shogun. Let's look at the definition of Shogun here. I'm actually going to look at the flashcards that I made for you guys on Quizlet. So let's come down to Shogun. Shogun, right here. A general who ruled Japan in the emperor's name. So he's a military leader ruling Japan, claims to be ruling for the emperor, helping the emperor out, but really he's the guy in charge. And it definitely still had samurai. And here's why, because the shogun was the leader, the ruler of the samurai in particular. And they came from the samurai class of people. And this is an incredibly cool picture. All right, so Europe at first mostly is sending guns and priests to Japan because Portuguese traders uh, bring along Jesuit priests. Remember, they were uh, Jesuit order of priests was created in the Catholic Counter-Reformation, a reaction against the Reformation of Martin Luther. And these priests go out to the world to spread Christianity, Catholic Christianity. And so they're actually converting people in Japan before Japan reacts to the European interlopers, as we'll see next. But they also distribute guns, which the shogun uses to establish his power in the first place. But then, once he's established himself, uh, Japan as a country, especially its leaders, react to the influence of Europeans. And I'm going to mispronounce this. I, I apologize. Uh, Sakoku, which is a policy in Japan where nearly no one could enter or leave Japan and trade was limited to two main ports. So again, Sakoku is a policy put in place by Japanese rulers where no one could leave, no one could enter Japan, and trade was limited to two ports. And it's often called isolationism in English. And that's all for this video.